So in the past recent months, Tuya Convert has gotten much easier. So of course we gotta do an update video and this is your 2.3 update, which is also sign language for get your shit out of the cloud. So we're gonna do this video a little different. We're gonna leave all the timestamps down in the video description. That way you can jump into all the different pertinent areas that you may need or need updating or whatever it might be. As well as we'll leave in the video description all the links to the various products and guides, etc. And of course, if you use some of our links, it does help things out and we appreciate it. So the first part, we'll jump in and do a straight to the point build of Tuya Convert on the Raspberry Pi. If you're not familiar on, well, what is Tuya Convert? Well, basically we're taking all of our different Tuya devices, such as light switches and plugs and light bulbs and tons of other products that have ESP8266s in them. And we do a simple little exploit to them and flash open source firmware such as Tasmodo, ESP Home, ESP Urna, whatever it might be. And basically take that device out of the cloud that you paid for and make it yours. And that way you don't have to deal with any other software updates or maybe someone's cloud going down one day, which sometimes happens. So towards the end of the video, we'll leave all the advanced sections for doing the various switch configurations and Tasmodo or getting your own binaries, etc. So check out the timestamps down below and grab the parts that you need. So in this example, we are going to be using Raspberry Pi 4, which is going to be the same as a Raspberry Pi 3. There are other ways to do this using various other Linux versions and whatnot. And if you're advanced enough, you can just skip on to download the software installation from GitHub. Of course, we have our Raspberry Pi 4. We have our micro SD card, micro SD card adapter, Ethernet to attach to the Raspberry Pi 4 since the Wi Fi adapter in the Raspberry Pi will be used for the exploit. And of course, we do have our exploit device. It's a simple little wall plug. This is made by AO Coker that does work with Tuya Convert. So, first, we'll need to flash the micro SD card with Raspbian Buster Lite. And of course, all the links and commands will be posted down in the video description down below. So we're going to download the Raspbian Buster Lite. And once that downloads, you extract that zip file to a folder. While that's downloading, you can go download Etcher if you don't already have it. Simply go down and hit download and let it download as well. And go ahead and insert your micro SD card into your computer. So go ahead and pick our Raspbian Buster Lite image. Make sure your micro SD card is selected and then ready to go. Hit the flash button. Once you see the percentage starting, just let it go through the flashing process and verify, and that's it. Once it's finished flashing, you'll need to eject the SD card and put it back into the computer and go into the boot partition. You need to make a new text file, and you'll call it SSH, and you'll need to remove the extension of .txt. Now, if you're not showing extensions, you need to change that setting in Windows so you can see all your extensions because you will need to make a file with no extension of just the name SSH. It's going to warn you about making the file wrong, but just go ahead and say yes. And now you'll have the file with no extension, and then you can do your ejection of the SD card from the computer. Now, one additional feature that has made things easier, before we were having to use a cell phone to use as the donor device. Well, now there is actually Arduino code that you can flash to a Wemos D1 Mini, Node MCU, etc. And you can just attach it with a short USB cable to the Raspberry Pi, and it will use the LED on the Wemos D1 Mini to indicate it's actually connected up to the Tuya Convert process. Very simple and makes things much easier. Of course, if you didn't have a spare Wemos D1 Mini, Node MCU, whatever it might be, you can still use your phone or laptop or whatever it might be as a donor device. It's just a lot easier with a little Wemos D1 Mini as the donor. Because basically what it does, it just constantly tries to connect to the VTrust Flash SSID over and over and just stay connected as much as it can. So we're going to flash this D1 Mini with the Tuya donor bin file. So on the Tuya Convert donor GitHub page, we'll download the generic one megabyte bin file. Hit the download button. And of course, we'll fire up our favorite Tasmatizer. We'll plug in our Wemos D1 Mini. Hit refresh in our COM ports. There's COM26. We'll pick our bin file. Once you got your bin file picked, and we'll hit Tasmatize. Even though we're not really doing that, we're just sending the donor bin file. We'll get to Tasmatizing later. 
And that's it. And then we'll put that aside and we'll connect that to the Raspberry Pi once we build that and put to your convert on it. So we'll put the micro SD card in our Raspberry Pi. We'll connect up the Ethernet. And then we'll power it up. So we're going to be using PuTTY to access the Raspberry Pi via SSH. You need to download and install PuTTY. And we'll leave the links for you. And then you'll need to log in to your DHCP server, which is typically going to be your router, and find the IP address that is assigned to your Raspberry Pi. So we'll pull up PuTTY and we'll do SSH. If you do get this message because you've used this Pi before, just go ahead and hit yes. So as I mentioned before, we will leave all of the commands so you can just copy and paste them down in the description of the video. And you may have to go to the blog post due to some YouTube restrictions that end up chewing up some of the commands sometimes. So log in as Pi and the password is just Raspberry. And it won't be showing that you're typing, which is fine. First one you'll want to do is sudo apt update. And then sudo apt install git and you'll say yes and we'll copy and paste our next command which is our git clone of to your convert and make sure you do double check the links down in the description of the video in case the repository does change in the future go ahead and let it clone and we'll type cd to your convert period slash install prereq sh and this part may take a while. Go ahead and let it run and then come back. And go ahead and get your exploit device, such as your switch, plug, light bulb, etc., ready because we're going to be flashing it soon. And while you're waiting on your Raspberry Pi to install all the libraries, come check us out in Discord down below. We'll leave the link for you. Come have fun with us. We'll learn a little things about Tasmodo and we'll share different projects and just have fun together. And of course, if you get stuck on any of this process, Someone's probably there that has done this before and can help you out immediately. So at this point where it says ready to start upgrade, I like to go ahead and do a reboot of the Raspberry Pi. So we'll do sudo reboot. We'll go ahead and click OK, and then we'll wait. Give it a little bit, and we'll go ahead and restart the session and log back in. Restart session. And again, we'll log in as Pi and Raspberry. At this point, we'll go ahead and choose whether you're going to use your phone or you're going to use that We Must D1 mini donor device. Now, we're going to be using the donor device. If you want to use your phone, you'll just go ahead and connect to the vtrust-flash access point. There is no password to it, and just make sure your phone stays connected to it during the flashing process. Now, you'll notice the LED is blinking on the We Must D1 mini because we need to do the start flash procedure first. So do CD to your convert. And if you did want to put your own bin files in there, such as ESP Home or newer versions of Tasmodo as they come out, use the timestamps down below and we'll skip through and we'll show you how to put in your own bin files. And that way, to your convert, we'll pick them right up. So do start flash. It'll tell you about the warning that, of course, you could brick your device. If you don't feel comfortable at this point, then you'll just go ahead and exit. But of course, yeah, we do want to take our stuff out of the cloud. So we're going to do yes and then enter. Now, of course, this is some of the new features to to your convert. If you do get any of these questions on here, go ahead and hit yes. And that way it'll correct the issue for you. So we hit yes and we hit yes on that one. We'll go ahead and hit yes again. And now you'll see it actually start the access point. If you're going to be using your phone, go ahead and connect to vtrust-flash. You also will notice on our Wemos D1 Mini, the LED went solid because on the to your donor bin file, it automatically tries to connect to that vtrush-flash automatically. Pretty cool stuff. So once you've connected your smartphone or you're using the to your donor, this is where timing is everything. What you'll want to do is, whether it be a light bulb or a switch or a smart plug, such as we're using here, you will need to put it into fast blinking or the fast pairing mode. You put it in the slow blinking mode where it puts out the access point, that's not going to work. So what you'll want to do is you'll go ahead and put it in fast pairing mode. And some devices may automatically come into pairing mode right out of the box. So we'll go ahead and plug this little plug in and we'll hold the button down for five seconds. You may have to consult the manual that does come with your to your device to get it into fast pairing mode. Light bulbs, you may have to flick them three or four times to get them to blink on and off. There's various different ways. Just check the little manual that comes with them. You'll see this one's in fast pairing mode. Once it's in fast pairing mode, you can go ahead and hit the enter key. 
and let the magic happen. And patience is key here. Just let it do its thing. And once you see it saying fetching firmware backup, you know the exploit is done and you're halfway there. If you do get an error message about no immediate firmware, go ahead and power cycle the plug or device and then start the process over again. And hopefully it will pick up and do it this time. Now at this point, awesome. You're sitting there waiting to flash your firmware. Now if you put in any other bins, they will be in the menu down below. You can see we got Tasmodo 7.0, which is the Wi-Fi man version, meaning it's gonna always come up as an access point. It's just in case you do fat finger your SSID and or password. So at this point, we're just gonna hit two. Are you sure you wanna flash Tasmodo? Yes, give a few seconds. And that's it, your device is out the cloud and it's ready to go. Now, do you want to flash another one? Then you'll just keep looping through and you can flash all your various devices and take them out of the cloud. So we're going to go ahead and hit no on this one. As soon as you do hit no, it does take that access point down. As you'll notice now, my Wemos D1 Mini LED is blinking, showing the access point is gone. So either with your phone or, of course, with your laptop or whatever it might be, Go ahead and look for an open access point. It's going to be Tasmodo dash, and then this will be four unique numbers based on your device. You'll need to connect to that access point, and it should bring you up to 192.168.4.1. So once it pulls up, you'll do a scan for Wi-Fi networks, and then you'll pick your Wi-Fi network and go ahead and put in your password. And just to make sure, go ahead and click the checkbox and make sure your password is correct and looks fine and then go ahead and hit the save button and that'll connect to your network. And once the device is connected to your network, well, what else do you do? Well, check out our next video on what to do next with Tasmodo. The link it should be up there as well as down there. So what about if you want to flash your own firmware, not ones that come with to your convert, you want to do a newer version of Tasmodo, or you want to go straight to ESP Home. Now, if you want to go straight to ESP Home, you'll need to set up your device first in the ESP Home dashboard. Now, we're not going to go all through the steps, because probably if you're wanting to go to ESP Home, you already kind of know this. If you don't, check out one of our previous ESP Home videos. So once you have the device ready, you'll go ahead and go into and click Compile. Let the device compile, and then you'll need to download that binary because we're going to upload that binary straight to the Raspberry Pi. Now, remember, typically with ESP Home, you will need to have a unique bin file per device ready to go. So one easy way to copy your bin files over, I like to use WinSCP. There are many other ways to do it, but basically what you'll do is you'll browse to the bin file downloaded from ESP Home. You go to the To Your Convert folder. You look in the Files folder and simply drag that bin file in. And that's it. And you can disconnect and then you can go ahead and flash your device. Just remember you need to put all your different bins for each device in that folder. You want to grab the latest dev copy of Tasmodo and flash it with to your convert. That's great. But I would test it on a Node MCU or Wemos D1 Mini first. You never know when there's some little bug that might creep up. And that would be an issue if you're flashing this on a light bulb or some other sealed plug. So we'll scroll down to the link that has the dev bins, and we're going to grab the Tasmodo Wi-Fi bin link address. So we'll right click it and we'll say copy link address. Now, one thing to note, do not grab the Tasmodo bin file. It's 568K, which will be too big to use during the two-year convert process. So that's why we're going to use the Tasmodo Wi-Fi man bin because it's 454K below the threshold that is required for two-year convert. And we'll flip over to our Raspberry Pi. We're already in the To Your Convert folder. We'll go to CD space files and we'll do wget space and then right click and it should paste in the Hackbox org with Tasmodo Wi-Fi bin. You should see it download the bin to your Raspberry Pi. You can do an LS just to make sure and see all your various bin files that you have ready to go with to your convert. Do CD dot dot, jump you back to to your convert, and we'll get our next plug ready to go. So I appreciate AO Coker for sending these plugs over for our to your convert testing. I'm sure that's what they meant him for.
and there it is. You can see there's our extra bins. We do have our ESP home bin of our color node, as well as we do have our new Tasmoto Wi-Fi man bin. So we'll go ahead and do number four and we'll say yes. And then we'll do no. So thanks for hanging out with us on our 2.3 update video for to you convert and definitely Take your shit out of the cloud. You don't know how long till you convert's gonna be running for, and they may update the firmware, and you may not even know it, and then your device will be stuck again. And how many times have we seen in the Home Assistant GitHub that there's issues with the Tuya cloud component? And no hate on any of the developers. It just the cloud just sucks for connecting to the Tuya. Take these things local and do it with MQTT or the API for your SP Home or whatever it might be, but make it local, make it yours. If you're looking for a bunch of other products to convert, we'll leave all of our affiliate links down below for all of our favorites. I appreciate all the Patreon subscribers. Your support helps bring new content to the channel all the time. And definitely, if you haven't checked us out, come on in Discord, have some fun, share your projects, or get some help in doing to you convert or home assistant or whatever it might be or just goofing off. If you're not a subscriber, you know the drill. Hit the buttons and y'all take care.